Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog, so let's get to it. All right, you guys. It's been a very interesting week. It doesn't even feel like the Super Bowl was just a few days ago, but gosh, what an uproar it has caused. And all because of little old Beyonce. That's right, you guys. America's sweetheart has pissed the white folks off. I don't even really know where to begin with this. Like, I'm so tired of all of this stuff that's just been going on for the last year or two. It's frustrating as a black person to try to get, I'm not going to say all white folks, okay? But to try to get some folks that don't really understand what it is to be a minority in this country to understand this whole Black Lives Matter moment. And movement and it's hard for me when I feel like I'm gonna be emotional or something about something it's hard for me to really get all my thoughts and everything together so you guys be patient <laughs> with me because I'm gonna try to get it out first of all Beyonce's performance on the Super Bowl Sunday where she wore her Michael Jackson slash Black Panthers tributary costumes her and her dancers people have decided that she is somehow pushing along the agenda of hate racism and um division and i just <laughs> for the life of me i i cannot understand where they are coming with this information you guys the black panther party they have now decided to compare them to the ku klux klan which is ridiculous the ku klux klan is a terrorist group that specifically sought out to terrorize black people killed black people for no other reason than being black. The Black Panther Party was a self-defense um, organization that was set up to protect black communities. They didn't seek out to aggressively stalk, terrorize, and kill white people. It was only an organization that was set to protect black people. And I cannot understand why some white people cannot understand the difference. Now, it seems really crazy that they would even be, be mad at Beyonce. Like I said, she was America's sweetheart. Everybody loves Beyonce. When you have that type of crossover appeal, you never would think that, you know, all of a sudden white folks would feel, you know, all out of sorts because of a simple performance at a Super Bowl game. But... I think that white folks are not necessarily comfortable with black people starting to, I don't want to say rise up because it ain't been no, you know, it ain't been no acting out, radical, radical acting out or, you know, anything like that. But I think black, white people in general are comfortable when black people are docile or dormant yeah they don't have any problem with black folks as long as everybody stays in their place okay don't point out when there is some obvious discrepancies and you know the legal system and things that happen i mean we've seen so many black people be treated unfairly this in this last year or two that <laughs> you know i don't even understand why they don't see why we are the way that we are but it's obvious that it's made them uncomfortable. And I'm okay with them being uncomfortable. You know, they should feel how we feel sometimes. Being the minority. And if they're so upset about a performance and the costuming at a football game, just imagine, you know, where our country is going if, in fact, black people are ready to make some more statements about, you know, black pride and Black Lives Matter. It's going to be an interesting next few years, you guys, with the political race and who's going to be our president. Yeah, I, I, I don't even really know what's going to happen in the future, you guys, but it's just so frustrating. I think that they forgot that Beyonce was black. I think that they felt that she was one that they had taken in as their own, okay? That they were safe enough that Beyonce wouldn't act out as such. What Beyonce did is made her coins, made a whole bunch of coins. Got a whole bunch of people behind her. And then decided to um, finally speak out. And even if it's just in a performance, obviously that performance has affected quite a few people. They out here at the NFL boycotting Beyonce, which is stupid. I mean, what does Beyonce have to do with the NFL anyway? And we see her concert is rolling right along with no problem, you guys. So, 
I'm so frustrated with the whole thing. Now, as far as this Tommy Lauren lady, she is a news reporter on Blaze TV, I think it's called. And she went on and on about Beyonce's performance. Let me see. I, I, I wrote down, I typed down exactly what she said. Now, besides her mentioning that in the past, Jay-Z was once a drug dealer, which is no secret. I mean, Jay-Z has talked about it, rapped about it. It's been articles and interviews and everything talked about this situation he's no longer a drug dealer but i guess in some ways you know in some people's eyes <laughs> once a drug dealer always a drug dealer okay even though he's achieved many 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 things since then on the positive side anyway she goes on um to say beyonce's performance politicized and advanced the notion that black lives matter more beyonce did not salute martin luther king or leaders that fought injustice with dignity she chose to pay homage to a group that advocated violence as a means to an end she chose to use her platform to agitate progress and encourage division <sighs> Don't you like the fact that they can say that, you know, just from her performance, that this is what she's saying, Black Lives Matter more? Did she even say that? Was there ever even a moment in the performance where Black Lives Matter was even mentioned? Like I said, white folks are uncomfortable and they have a problem that a person that they thought was their own has decided to kind of stab them in the back and finally speak out. We can't have niggas like this acting out like this. Now, we thought she was like, you know, the Michael Jordans and all the rest of them that we just made, was able to kind of put off into a pocket. They a different kind of nigga, but obviously not. So they've disappointed Tommy and countless others, obviously. Okay, now you know the beehive came after Tommy with the greatest of vengeance. And uh, she went on to say that, uh, you know, that they are the ones that are racist, that they're the ones that's full of hate, that she does not... Um, cow down to racists she will not be moved she's not afraid of them on and on and on i tried to go on her instagram and now it's private <laughs> i can imagine what the fuck is going on on that damn instagram page and frankly you guys i hope people continue to harass her i know that's not the mature way to be but you know what fuck i'm tired of it i'm tired of this whole conversation it's so hard to even see any end to this because it's, it's like an ongoing cycle. We as black people say, you know what? We wouldn't have to make a big deal out of Black Lives Matter if in a perfect world, all lives did matter. But from past experience and shit that's been going on recently, um, <laughs> black lives don't seem to matter. So we have to reiterate that black lives do matter, okay? And then white people go on to say, well, if you want to be included, then you shouldn't say that black lives matter. And you should say that all lives matter. And then we go on to say, well, yeah, all lives would matter if you didn't treat black lives so fucked up. You know, so it's just like, it's an ongoing circle that is just so frustrating because I just don't see any end to it. It seems like every day is just worse and worse. And it's just depressing. I couldn't even deal with Instagram. I'm not on Facebook. As a matter of fact, my Facebook page, my It's Rocks page, I don't even have access to it. They've locked me out because I didn't have a picture on another page and they wanted me to upload a driver's license or something. Anyway, they locked me out of the damn thing. So anybody that's leaving shit on the It's Rocks, that's why you guys, I haven't been responding because I can't get to it. So that's what's going on over there. But anyway, I just, it's just, it's just been a drag. Twitter's been a drag. Instagram's been a drag. I hear about what's going on on Facebook. You turn on the news. It's all this bullshit about Black Lives Matter and the NFL and Beyonce and the Black Panthers and Ku Klux Klan and all of that. It is so depressing. Because it's so frustrating when you can't get people to just understand how you feel, okay? Without you being this whole radical, angry, you know, out of control black person that just wants to go and kill all the white people because they don't want to, you know, they, they, they hate white folks. And it's not like that. It's just frustrating because the hurt is so deep that nobody is willing to just kind of compromise and realize that, yeah, there is some race issues and it's to a point where now black people are tired of sitting back and getting you know the, the 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 fucked up treatment so i'm tired of the tommy lauren thing i feel like she's ignorant however she is definitely um the way a lot of white americans feel 
right now and like i said i just don't know how to get them to understand any differently so we got those issues going on with the white folks but i can't even just put it all on the white folks okay because black people let me talk to you too we can't even seem to agree on this whole fucking beyonce performance people complain that she didn't speak out enough she wasn't active enough in the community she was too quiet she continued to do her music it had nothing of substance and anything like that and i'm not saying that this song that she has right now is anything of substance however the imagery in the video as long as well as the imagery that she you know put forth in this super bowl performance and all of that i think that's some sort of statement from beyonce way more than she's ever done in the past and black people still are mad about it now they say that she's doing it because she is exploiting it or too little too late or you know she's still in this sexy clothes or you know <sighs> I'm telling you, it's so fucking frustrating because it's like she's damned if she does or if she doesn't. Black people sometimes have such tunnel vision that they don't understand that even if Beyonce was using this as a platform to just kind of further her own career, I don't think that's, that's what she's doing. But by the slight chance that that is what she's doing, do you guys realize that Beyonce is such a huge performer, such a huge entertainment person in the united states in this world that she still <laughs> would further the black lives matter agenda even if she was by some chance you know gaining from it financially or whatever it is in her own way you know it's just like you let's look at the bigger picture we have somebody here that is i won't say a symbol i mean we ain't gonna put her up on coretta and and uh, rosa parks and all of that but Anything where, you know, certain, the majority would see that we we are ready to bring this whole Black Lives Matter movement. I don't even keep wanting to say Black Lives Matter because it's not even just Black Lives It's just like, fuck, we black and we just want to be like regular folks. I mean, we supposed to be Americans. That's how we want to feel as well. Okay. But black people, just us and ourselves, we can't get it together. Okay, so we half of us pissed off that she did the damn song, the video, the black light, you know, whatever. When really, we should be banding together because it's bigger than Beyonce. It's bigger than that right now because now we've got, you know, the majority, like I said, a lot of people thinking that now we are like the racist ones and we are the ones, you know. Just, and, and we keep on saying it just because we say that black lives matter don't mean that you know white lives don't matter we just saying that we as a people are recognizing that we have to support each other and say that we we do too matter ain't nobody putting no fucking more on it ain't nobody putting no only on it you know so huh. but so i so i get frustrated even with my own black people because if you guys could read the comments on my whole video from my super bowl video and the beyonce performance and all of that I mean, just the just the people, just you know, the fuck, it's just frustrating. It is fucking ridiculous, and um, I don't even know if we ourselves are ready to just you know tackle on this whole big movement because we can't get our own fucking selves together. Yeah, it, it's it's just pitiful. It is a pitiful, fucked up situation, you guys. I know I've talked about this way, way, way too long. I don't know what is going to be the end of this. I don't know how we as black people are going to feel included in this, you know, nation. I don't want to feel like I have to move back to Africa to be accepted, you know. Quiet as it's kept, they probably wouldn't accept us there either. I just don't even know what else to say about it. I don't know what else to say about it. Okay, all I know is that I'm frustrated. I'm tired. I don't, I'm just tired. That's it. Tired. Y'all, and then another depressing story. So, one of the Black Lives Matter activists, I think his name is Marshawn McCarroll. Is that what his name is, y'all? Yes. Marshawn McCarroll has killed himself on the steps of the Ohio State House. And his family said that it was because, well, his family and friends believe that it was because of the emotional and physical toll of this Black Lives Matter movement um, has taken on this young man. I think they said he was 23 years old. Um, I mean, that right there lets you know. But first of all, I'm not saying nobody, you know, we can't be blaming, you know, a movement on this man's, you know, 
suicide or whatever. I mean, obviously there were other issues there if he felt he couldn't handle it enough to kill himself. But even with that being said, if that right there doesn't let you understand how just um, terribly depressing this whole Black Lives Matter situation is, when it really shouldn't be, I mean, that there, I just, you guys, it's just, it's just, it's just a bummer, right? I, I, I don't know what. Our prayers go up to the uh, McCarroll family. Hopefully, that uh, Marshawn's death is not in vain, and that this, you know, this Black Lives Matter movement, you know, that there is some positive results from um, his hard work and everybody else involved. <laughs> All right, you guys, let me get a story that's going to get me back. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's such a downer today, you guys. Uh, let's talk about Kay Michelle. So last week, we talked about Kay Michelle and her unnecessary attack of uh, Toya Wright. You know, we kind of all agreed, or we sort of so somewhat agreed, that Kay Michelle needs to move on. And uh, I guess she was listening in some sort of way because she decided to try to do just that by reaching out to the person that was giving her so much grief. That's right, Kay Michelle in Memphis were able to talk on the phone and provide some closure to their situation. Kay Michelle puts up a very long Instagram post that says, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm just paraphrasing for you guys, but you know, basically she thanked him for her start in her career and that he recognized um, the talent in her. Um, he apologized for talking so bad about her in these internet screets. <laughs> Um, and I'm assuming she apologized for lashing out as much as she did. Whatever the hell the case was, they were able to even laugh about some good old times. And um, at least from her side, she says that she has been able to add closure to this situation. She doesn't feel that she's going to have to lash out at Memphis and Toya. And um, at least we're hoping that the petty Betty inside of her will not resurface as far as this three-way relationship has gone. Look, I don't know what else to say. Good for Kay Michelle. This is what we said we've been wanting, right? Kay Michelle's definitely a work in progress. You know, we didn't think that it would happen with this Tamar thing, and we haven't heard her speak out about the whole Tamar situation since then. Let's hope with this thing with Memphis that it'll be the same. And speaking of Kay Michelle, a little birdie is out <laughs> letting the internet know that, uh, Idris Elba has broken up with his baby mama. And I suppose that Kay Michelle would like to get a little piece of old Idris considering that, you know, he is the love of her life. But not so fast, Miss K. Michelle, because they say that Idris has been spotted booed up with none other than Naomi Campbell. Now, we all know that Naomi Campbell likes more of the white billionaire type, two of which <laughs> Idris is not. So, you know, I kind of feel like this, this little play thing fling that, you know, Naomi Campbell goes through. And she'll be the drop the nigga soon enough. And then K. Michelle, look, girl, you maybe you can swing your ass in front of or something, you know. Let him get a whiff. Maybe you have a chance with old Idris before he finally takes it on back to baby mama child. You know they always end up back with their baby mama. So, yeah, that is the situation with K. Michelle, Memphis, Toya, and then on the side note of Idris, Naomi, and baby mama. All right, you guys, so last night I was able to catch up on some of my programming. First up, the O.J. Simpson, People vs. O.J. Didn't I tell you guys about how the damn uh, tr slow chase throughout the whole Los Angeles went? It was exactly what I said, right? On the 405, everybody over the <laughs> damn overpass. That basically was the whole episode, and it was really good, you guys. I had almost got to the point where I forgot that it was Cuba Gooding Jr. I think that he's going to do good at this role, um, and he has no choice but to do well considering he doesn't look like OJ at all for me. But yeah, we was able to really get into the psyche of OJ and AC and that damn Bronco, right? Um, The frustrations of Marsha Darden, Christopher Darden, who obviously hated OJ Simpson from the very beginning. It's quite dramatic. It's overly dramatic. We got, um, 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 what was the other, what's the other lawyer's name? Robert, um, not Kardashian, but the other one, the main one, 
Um, th that's what I wanted to point out also. Robert Kardashian was not considered the main attorney back at the time, okay? He was more so O.J. Simpson's friend. He just happened to be an attorney, so he was on the team. However, he wasn't a big part of, you know, his whole defense team, and I hate that they're, you know, making it such a big deal. That scene when the girls spell out their names and chant Kardashian, I was just like, oh my God. God. I'm not going to be able to take too much of that if that's what they're going to do in this fucking show. But, um, really, it was Robert. What was the other? Robert? What? Robert? I'm going to put it on the screen. But Robert, then shortly after, they added Johnny Cochran to the, to the team. But, yeah, Robert Kardashian was not so bad. This is the only part that was really, really wearing on my nerves. I think it's funny how, you know, the character Robert that John Travolta's playing that I can't remember his last name. I think it's so funny that he's just sort of, just sort of like, mm. <laughs> you know, they're kind of just really portraying him as like this snobby, only out for self-defense lawyer who just happens to be defending O.J. Simpson. But, you know, I don't even know if he care if O.J. is guilty or innocent. He look like he more about just the popularity, making his coins, okay, being on TV, all of that. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's been interesting. I think it's still going to be good. What are you guys thinking about the show so far? I, I, I think it's still been something that I'm enjoying. <laughs> okay, at the end when he, after he the fucking stressed everybody, all that damn screaming and sweating and crying and guns and all of that i was so fucking stressed out poor ac when they finally got back to the house ac got out the truck and then it was finally just oj and then he finally gets out <laughs> he was looking at the police like hey i'm sorry y'all i was tripping i'm sorry <laughs> i was just like poor oj that nigga was spent you guys so yeah i'm enjoying it it's sensational but i am enjoying it what do you guys think about it so far I also watched the next 15 and uh, surprisingly you guys I actually like the show I'm not gonna be reviewing it though cuz so don't ask no I'm not but I know Alex is and um, Ashley might be and Kevin and them I'm sure I'll talk about it in their um, in, in their um, in their videos or whatever but it looks like it's a pretty good show I, I still don't really understand the, the, the concept I think it's a reality show about the behind the scenes of making a reality show I think that's what it's about. <laughs> okay, and I guess all of the people that are on the show in their lives and, you know. But whatever it is, I mean, I thought yesterday was pretty interesting when they had the, you know, the focus group and, and them being able to sit behind the, you know, the wall and listen to what people thought about them. Actually, I thought that was genius of Carlos because, um, you know, a lot of the times these reality stars, most of the times, 99% of the times reality stars do not get to confront the negative ninnies in their comments or anything like that so this was kind of their way to confront these people back and uh, you know after everybody has said whatever they had to say about everybody now everybody meaning claudia jordan jennifer williams laura govan ben zeno this gentleman caramo who i d didn't even know and um new york of course but everybody had their feelings about each person claudia seems like she is going to be on the show to be claudia okay the same claudia that we got on real housewives of atlanta i believe is what we'll get also on this show um i think maybe she feels like because she was on real housewives of atlanta and very recently i think she feels like she's kind of at the top of the chain here jennifer williams looks like she's on the show to be more assertive and to get people to realize that she's not a pushover and that she can hang with the best of them she doesn't have to ratchet herself down to do so but you know she's not a pushover and she's going to speak out and so she's quite a bit more messy and outspoken and talkative in this show than she's ever been in basketball wise so that looks like that's jennifer's thing laura govan she's always been i you know she's always been kind of the sneaky sit in the cut type just kind of watch and observe what's going on and then she kind of makes her plan from there so i don't really know how laura govan is gonna be jennifer did say some shit about you know Gl gloria supposedly fucking her husband their baby daddy i guess i should say and and she also mentioned some shit about uh drea supposedly you know that he's the father of the of the kid um, you know, Andrea had to speak out again and say he's not the daddy and his daddy is a barber and, you know, this, that, and the others, whatever. So I, I guess Laura is there maybe to kind of help her own self look like, you know, she is not just this person that's self-centered and self-concerned and, you know, that she's a 
good mom and she's able to juggle all these things i don't know we'll see what goes on with laura benzino i have no interest in benzino but you know because of the drama with him and althea um i guess we'll see some of the behind the scenes shit on that this caramel guy like i said i don't know him never had seen him or anything but he is showing up good looking i was like fuck another one gone to the other side like what is with these fine ass men that's gay well, somebody was telling me that i need to to follow him on snapchat because he's always naked and i was just like oh he's just a tease and then i was just like let me just take a little peek <laughs> it's a goddamn shame though you guys somebody look like that should be gay anyway he kind of looks like he's going to not really get along too well with uh, jennifer williams and then it looks like claudia is going to be the enemy of a lot of people so you know we're going to mix it all up and then of course new york is going to be new york new york believes that she is um, the queen be here that everybody's gonna work under her like she said new york is the beginning of this whole reality show way outspoken i would almost even say that jocelyn might have you know kind of mirrored some of new york's personality and brought it to atlanta so <clears throat> yeah new york is gonna be new york as well jada told me that i kind of look like new york i was just like but i guess we do y'all it's, it's right up in this little here it's a little monkey lip <laughs> so the show looks like it's gonna be good it looks like carlos king just wanted to be on tv okay we already had an idea that he wanted to be on tv from you know when he would do the hosting for the hollywood divas reunions okay he'd just be so fucking excited to be there you know so i figured he probably was like this is perfect because i can be on the show along with these real i can be on a reality show and still be the producer and still make my money and become a star you know so good for carlos king i always tease all these people but you know i, I actually have a lot of respect for carlos and mona and um you know shawnee these black people that are making differences in the reality shows even though you know people complain that it's exploitative i just like to see especially black women doing it not calling carlos no woman or nothing y'all so good for him i hopefully the show will do well are you guys going to be watching it well you guys sierra ain't playing no more she didn't put out a lawsuit on your boy future for 15 million dollars for slander slander and libel it said that he'd been out there talking reckless and foul about her in the internet and blogs all of which actually she says is not true that she's a wonderful parent and she doesn't have problems with her parenting skills that she doesn't make it hard for future to see his child and she don't know what the fuck he's talking about okay but whatever all he got to say is hindering her career <laughs> i mean you know they say sierra got a singing career child i guess you know i like sierra she's cute enough and her and russell seem to be very happy and i guess she was like fuck this i'm tired of this 15 million nigga give me my money okay um future says she trying to sue me i'm gonna sue her ass back okay because she the one started with this whole libel and slander when she made that stupid ass i bet song y'all i bet you start loving me i guess the difference there is that that's artistic expression okay it's a song she doesn't directly say future even though we know who she's talking about that's the case that we want to say that everything that's said in the song is true future would be fucking overdosed on drugs strong you know out somewhere because that's all the fuck he talks about we don't think all that about uh, future right so <laughs> i mean i guess in the same argument we could say that sierra wasn't necessarily talking about him although she was so i think artistic expression is probably protected a little bit more than you know a nigga just getting on a blog somewhere and saying that bitch is crazy she got control issues she won't let me see my child i give her fifteen thousand damn dollars every month okay do i feel like she's gonna get 15 million dollars no i don't think she's going to get that amount i think she decided to put that amount out there to let her know nigga i ain't fucking with you no more i'm not playing with you leave me to fuck alone and even though it's probably going to get way worse before it gets better they're gonna have to figure it out and they're gonna have to work it out because they got this kid nothing is worse than two parents that's fighting over a child eventually they're gonna get tired they're gonna realize that you know we're gonna have to come to some sort of agreement and work this shit out so i think that's what it'll be i don't think it's gonna be 15 million i don't even think it's gonna be a cash settlement i think that the judge is gonna get them to try to mediate and, and get the shit together so hopefully that's what happens because um it's tiring to see people fight over their kids in the public 
All right, you guys, and let me try to hit you with a feel-good story. Shit. Serena Williams has an organization called the Serena Williams Fund, and she has partnered with Helping Hands in Jamaica to build not one, not two, but three schools. And I am talking about actual elbow grease. Serena is over in Jamaica helping to build the structures, lending her helping hand to the Helping Hands Jamaica. I think that's a wonderful thing. It's good to know that with all the other bullshit that's going on in this world, there is still some people out there who care about the betterment of those that are underrepresented, underprivileged, the poor, basically. We gonna get Serena the fist pump of righteousness right on to you, Serena. Hopefully there will be others that will follow in your footsteps and help those that don't have as much as we do. Y'all, I'm so wore out today. I hate when I'm in this kind of mood when I, you know, and it's almost that time. Y'all know, so nigga, you know, it's always, like I told you, I'm either gonna cuss somebody out or I'm gonna cry. Something gonna happen in these next couple of days. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, that PMS be a bitch. But anyway, you guys, um, I'm, we gonna get it together. Black Girls on Television will be up tomorrow. Also, you guys, the blackout is coming. So you guys are going to hear us talking more and more about it. It is the weekend of July 15th through the 17th. We're still getting the particulars down, but um, it definitely is happening. The actual blackout event is happening on July 16th, Saturday, um, from 3 to 8 p.m. at the Crow's Nest, just like what we did last year. So looking forward to seeing everybody. Hopefully those who didn't make it can come this year those who came last year hopefully you guys will come again this year and we can just have one big stone cold group god damn it we need a party so much shit going on right so anyway you guys i'm gonna get it together i'm about to give me some sushi you guys can see the background that's always in the background when i be over here at the sushi place so get my sushi take it on back to work and that's that okay so we do this every single week make sure that you rate comment and subscribe and make sure you come back Until next time, rock stars. Bye.